All right, Dr. Jeff, we are live here. Welcome, everybody, to an episode of the Expect Miracles podcast. Today is a very special episode. We are going to go over everything that ties into vestibular issues, Meniere's disease, vertigo, tinnitus, earfulness, hearing loss. There are so many people walking around with this diagnosis, and they have absolutely no answers. Um, it's something we've really been addressing in our in our practice at Montclair Upper Cervical. Um, we've been specializing in it recently. We start about five or six people up a week with it, mostly because people are going to their ENTs. They're getting these vestibular issue diagnoses of Meniere's disease and vertigo, and they're just not getting any answers. They're trying a bunch of different medications when we think we know what the root cause of the problem could be and how upper cervical care can help. Um, before we jump into that, today's podcast episode is sponsored by Settex. You can visit settexgrip.com for the best gripping technology on your eyeglasses, earbuds, phones, and gaming controllers. Save 25% when using the promo code Dr. Pekka 25 at checkout. That is D R P E C C A 25 at checkout. All right, Dr. Jeff, welcome to the Expect Miracles podcast once again. I think this is might be your third episode here. Um, yeah, no, Dr. I'm picking up a tally. <laughs> Dr. Jeff is a Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractor at Montclair Upper Cervical. Um, and we're really excited for today's episode. Um, I think it's going to it's gonna be a lot of great information that's going to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jeff, how are you today? Doing well. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful Thursday. So, uh, you know, no complaints on my end. Absolutely. So, Dr. Jeff, um, we are talking about vestibular issues and Meniere's disease today. So can you do a quick rundown of of why vestibular issues may happen um, and the actual uh, the path, the neuropath it takes in the body of why these symptoms are actually occurring? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll try to keep this as concise and straightforward as I can. So we know that the vestibular system is a system that's the way I like to think of it, it's continuously providing feedback into certain areas of the brain. And it's really instrumental in providing a sense of balance, equilibrium, um, especially then coordinating that with how body movements of um, or movements of the head and the neck. And what, ha what it does is it kind of provides this feedback to the brain and that allows then the brain to integrate this information and to make adaptive, corrective, or compensatory movements based on both internally and externally generated forces in and around the body. Um, so this vestibular system, the there's different regions of it. The one on the outside that most people are aware of is the kind of the organs, organelles in the inner ear, like the uh, vestibule and the, um, uh, and the other canals in, in the inner ear, um, the semi-lunar oh, semi well. yeah. um, So what that does then is these are providing um, information into particularly the brainstem, where the vestibular nucleus is, the cerebellum, which helps control muscle coordination and posture, as well as the somatosensory cortices. Um, so now you, so this is going to be really instrumental, obviously. And when we have damage or issues with the vestibular system, what winds up happening is that's going to affect our sense of, of balance. It's going to affect the body's ability to control eye movement, especially when we're moving the head. Um, and it's also going to affect our sense of orientation um, in space. So, so if, if somebody has a problem with their vestibular system, especially it could be coming from their upper neck, they could be suffering with vertigo, tinnitus, ear fullness, hearing loss, probably some type of headaches or eye pressure as well. This is all tied into what you're talking about, that vestibular system, correct? Exactly. And so to build on what you just said is, so that's obviously, how does the neck come into play here? Because obviously I mentioned the, the ears and the eyes. So how does the neck come in? Um, there, it, it and I like to look at it, it deals with this idea of proprioception, which is a very fancy term that we use in the medical community for your body's ability to sense where it is in time and space. That's how I like to think of it. And you get this 
proprioceptive positional information from receptors in your skin, your muscles, and your joints. Those are the three areas it comes from. Looking, studies have found that there the joint capsules on the facet joints in your cervical spine are highly, highly innervated with um, this tactile receptors and pain receptors from free nerve endings, part of this proprioceptive information. So how does this tie into? What winds up happening is they've also found that about 50% of your proprioceptive information from your neck occurs between C1 and C3. So the first, there's seven bones in the neck, first three bones in the neck are going to supply a significant amount of this positional information into the brain. And on top of that, we also know that the deep cervical muscles in the neck also provide a significant amount of this proprioceptive information from the muscle spindle fibers, which all makes sense based on the anatomy and mechanics of the neck, because the vast majority of your rotation in your neck occurs between C1 and C2, literally why axis looks like an axle and atlas is a ring that rotates around it. Um, so... How, do, how, you know, continuing to build, how does this all make sense in terms of vestibular issues? Well, when we have damage and changes to the structures in the neck, whether it's through trauma, muscular fatigue, um, you know, changes in the curvature of the neck or just kind of direct pain, degeneration, what this is going to do is it's now going to affect the ligament stability and the ligament system in the upper neck. It's going to affect the tendons and the connective tissue that also help to provide stability to this area of the neck. And now that's going to affect the stability and the function of these cervical facet joints that are feeding this information. So what winds up happening when you have now abnormal signaling, positional signaling coming from these facet joints in the neck into the brain, and when that is now not matching up with the information bringing, being sent in from the vestibular system, that difference, that mismatch is now going to cause a jumbling of information in the brainstem, the cerebellum. And that's where you can get this um, production of things like uh, vertigo. And we have so many patients that come in and they say, you know, listen, I hear what you're saying. Trauma, car accident, sports injury, slip and fall. Um, I have never had any of these and I'm suffering with these issues. Why is this going on? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't have to be that big of a trauma or impact. Uh, keep in mind, there is no disc space up top between C1 and C2. So mm -hmm. it's just held together by the ligaments and muscles. So it's very easy for that area to slip out of place. It could happen as early as getting pulled out of the birth canal too hard. Yep. And if, as any, if anybody's ever seen a little baby try to walk for the first time, they fall down 20, 30, 40 times, maybe even more between they can actually take their first steps. So we do have so many people come into our office that said, I've never had a car accident. I've never felt there is no trauma history. They mm -hmm. have vertigo, tinnitus. They have um, all the vestibular issues going on. We take the 3D x-rays and their neck is a mess up there. Yeah. So. You don't have to be in a huge accident or anything for this to occur. Usually what we find is there's some type of trauma. It could start as early as the child birthing process or childhood. Mm -hmm. And the body is so good at adapting and compensating that symptoms don't show up till 15, 20 years later. Yep. And that's when people say, I just woke up with all these vestibular issues. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Jeff, from what we've seen in our office What's the first route people usually take when they do get these vestibular issues? Usually I see people go right to the ENT. Yeah, I would definitely say the ENT seems to be the the big one. Um, I would say maybe a close second is a neurologist because they might, someone who maybe has someone that's had similar issues might say, well, this could be a nerve issue. So yeah, I would say ENT for sure. Um, and it usually a lot of the times the ENT is going to look to do some kind of an epilepsy maneuver. That seems to be, which makes sense because that's usually people think vertigo. They think the crystals in the inner ear, obviously, because that's where the vestibular system is. Um, right. So absolutely. I would say ENT number one, I would say neurologist number two. And then usually I would say maybe 25 to 50% therapy, yeah, get sent to physical therapy for like vestibular therapy. Sometimes it's just regular physical therapy absolutely. And, or sometimes it's just a, they try um, more of a, uh, routine chiropractic 
avenue. Absolutely. And listen, the the Epley maneuver is great. They are trying to realign those crystals in in uh, in the ears there to help the vertigo pass. And sometimes you have great results. But if you've tried the Epley maneuver three, four times and it's not working and sometimes it's made you feel worse, it's time to explore different avenues. Um, we've had patients do the Epley maneuver, steroid injections, water pills, getting getting the, the earwax out of the ears. Mm -hmm. um, people have tried everything and they usually end up in our office as a last resort. Now, yes. why is it so important to, okay, we hear that the facet joints, the neck, uh, the joints that chiropractors adjust, especially between C1, C2, and C3 are so important. I'm just going to go to my chiropractor and I'm just going to get this fixed. Yeah. Well, only about 5% of people specialize in the upper cervical chiropractic field. And it's such a delicate area. The brainstem is right there. And these bones have to be put in place down to the exact millimeter for the blood flow and nerve flow to be completely put back in place. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to a chiropractor, they're not taking x-rays and they're just twisting, cracking your neck. Chances are they are not going to realign this issue. Mm -hmm. In our office, we take very precise three-dimensional x-rays. We figure out what your neck looks like and we put everything back into alignment down to the exact millimeter. We use the Blair upper cervical technique. Mm -hmm. And what we love about this technique so much is we say holding is healing. So our goal is to do the adjustment as few amount of times as possible and have it hold in place weeks to months to years. Mm -hmm. Holding is healing. If you are getting an adjustment every, if you're getting an upper neck adjustment every single time you're at the chiropractor two or three times a week, there's not much holding going on. That area is not staying in place and you're not healing. Now, mm -hmm. granted, Dr. Jeff and I like to say we like to do it as few amount of times as possible. Sometimes yeah. it does take a few times for everything to start holding. Um, mm -hmm. And Dr. Jeff, this is the million dollar question we always get. How long does it take for this issue to resolve? And let's, uh, let's talk about that real quick. Absolutely. Um, and this is one I, I wish for our patients that we had a crystal ball and that was part of your exam process. And we could say definitively, here it is. Um, you and I have talked about this plenty of times. I think it really comes down to you have to look at the system as a whole. So, you know, we're addressing those, these misalignments. We're addressing, um, you know, and uh, allowing the body to hold. We're essentially helping to try to reestablish stability in this upper cervical, um, upper cervical region. And I think it 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 it, it depends on not only the severity of the misalignments, the chronicity of the misalignments. Um, or the subluxations, but I think you, you also have to look at the whole system. What's the, what's the connective tissue like in the area? What's the ligament system like in the area? You know, what's the muscle tone and the tendon tone in the area? Because yeah, we're trying to, we're, we're continuously working to get the, the joints back in proper alignment, take pressure off the nervous system, allow the nerves to heal. But these other areas take time to heal as well. These other structures in this area, it, nothing in the body is done in isolation. And if you and we know that the connective tissue and the ligaments get a lot different quality and quantity of blood supply than your muscles and your muscle tendons. So if you've had long term misalignments that have not only put a lot of compression and pressure on your nerves and your nervous system, that not only has to get fixed, we know it takes the nerves about 180 days to replace their outer coating. Then on top of it, your ligaments need time to heal. All the structures that help maintain the stability of these joints need time to heal. So if you've consistently stretched and irritated these ligaments and connective tissues over time and over time, they might need that might what might need a long time to heal. So putting things back into place, allowing the nerves to heal, then allowing this whole uh, anatomy of this upper cervical complex time to heal, that's what's going to determine how long it takes to heal. And from your story, Kevin, on, on your own, like you had three major ice hockey concussions. We also know from, you know, you from ice hockey, me from soccer and rugby, like that's, those are the big three, let alone probably a ton of minor head knocks, body crashes, bumps and bruises along the way from just playing the sport and other activities. It took you time to heal because not only was the nerves needing time to heal, the body was needing time to recalibrate itself, but everything that was helping to maintain the stability in this area needed that time to heal. And Absolutely. that's what, 
that's the big thing is we're not just trying to do a quick fix of symptoms. We want our patients to get better, but we really want to truly want to reestablish the health stability um, of this upper neck area so that our patients have an optimal life and can do the things they want to do going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. So from what we have seen in our practice, it usually takes about three or four months to stabilize the upper cervical spine. Mm -hmm. And in that process, a lot of people have that forward head uh, carriage that's mm -hmm. turning their neck the exact wrong way. We usually see that takes about three or four months to bring back, mm -hmm. stabilize the muscles, ligaments, and tendons up there. Um, and every single case is different. I mean, we've had people with very severe Meniere's disease that, you know, after the first adjustment, they're like 50% better. A lot of things are, have went away. Yep. And then we have, we have other patients where the needle really doesn't move for a month or two. And around mm -hmm. that two or three month mark, everything starts to get better. Yep. We don't know which category you are going to be in. Yep. But that's why we say give your upper cervical chiropractic about three or four months because some things are going to get better. Some mm -hmm. things are going to stay the same. The first six weeks, we love showing this chart to people. It can be a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. A couple of days where it's the best you have ever felt in a long time and you think you're healed. And then in two or three days later, you start getting your old symptoms back again and it kind of dips down again. And it's a little bit discouraging because, you know, you were feeling so good. But the nervous system remembers everything. It heals through all its past injuries and traumas. So it can be a little bit of a roller coaster ride as you're healing up in the first six weeks. Um, I had a great first adjustment, but if I only came in once or twice, there's no way I would ever be where I'm sitting today. Mm -hmm. um, you have to constantly keep getting checked, especially within the three, first three or four months, to make sure you are holding your adjustment. Mm -hmm. Now, you can hold that adjustment all the way through. That's that's the goal, but it's still worth getting checked because. Uh, we want to make sure, first and foremost, it's in place. It's going to be tough for that patient to tell within the first couple of months if they're holding. Um, mm -hmm. We want to make sure it's in place. And we also offer support work to keep that in place. We also do a little bit of massage around the neck. We do check the hips, the shoulders, the mid-back to see if there's anything going on there. So we call that support work to help hold that upper cervical spine. And I would just add on top of it, too, it also depends on what you're doing outside of the office, because we obviously are going to try to give you our best every time you come in, because that's our goal. We want to get you feeling better. But if you're not fostering an environment where your neck, your body has a chance to heal, if you're getting adjusted and then you're going out and, you know, putting your neck, if you're sitting, you're constantly looking down, you're throwing up heavy weight over your head. You're not giving your body a chance to heal. Like I said, look at it as a system. It's not just about, you know, you, it's the joints have to heal, the ligaments have to heal, the connective tissue has to heal. And if you're constantly putting stress on that upper neck area, your body's going to go back to what it's used to. So if you've been subluxated in two, three, you know, one, two different positions at multiple levels for four, five, six, seven, 10, 20 years, you know, you, you got the body can heal a lot faster than it can get damaged, but you have to give it time. So if you are creating a scenario where you're not being mindful of what's going on um, with your body, you're going to kind of put a little bit of resistance and it's going to take that much longer because now the body has to, you have to work uphill instead of giving yourself a more even train to work with. Yeah. We usually say the first uh, the 40, 48 to 72 hours after the first adjustment is going to be the most important time frame to let your body heal and hold. We mm -hmm. recommend no heavy lifting or exercising. If you want to go for a walk, that's absolutely fine. But as Dr. Jeff just said, the goal is to help this stay in place. And if you have muscle or ligament instability, um, it's going to want to go back to its old position. So that's why it's so important to let it almost, it's like super glue. You put the super glue down. Yeah. And for two days, you just kind of want to let it mold together. And so mm -hmm. it stays in place. And then you have a better chance of holding your adjustment. Um, we also say try not to sleep on your stomach with your head turned for six hours because that's going to put a big kink in your neck. Mm -hmm. Try not to fall asleep on the sofa in a weird position uh, that first night of the adjustment. And usually what we find is overhead activity, shoulder presses, pull-ups, and pull-downs. That's mm -hmm. going to pull directly on the neck. Yeah. So we usually say be careful. Now, there are patients that 
you know, their necks are strong. They can handle this. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we have, we have patients that teach yoga and we tell them, you know, take it easy for two days and they're out teaching yoga class on day three doing handstands and they do hold their adjustment and it's yeah. fine. But I usually tell people, a lot of people come to us with upwards of 10 to 20 neurological symptoms, board vision, dizziness, headaches, vertigo, yeah. ear fullness, tinnitus, all this stuff. And I tell them, listen, you have been through hell the last five, 10 years. Yeah. Let's just give this a chance to hold in place so we get you better. Um, if, if somebody's more for maintenance, um, they're coming in, they just want to, um, they just want to stable, uh, they just want to, you know, come in for maintenance care, Yeah, go for it. Three, after two or three days, you know, be careful, resume your other workouts. Um, but if you have been suffering tremendously uh, over the last couple of years with a lot of neurological symptoms, we do recommend taking easy for two or three days. And being very careful over the, within the first month to help everything stabilize in place. Yeah. And I think, Kevin, you can probably attest to this. Like, if we knew what each one of, if we had a video log of what each one of our patients was doing every day, we could probably go in and say, okay, like, be careful with this. Be careful with this. Okay, like, this is okay. Obviously, we don't. So giving the instructions to, to patients is more of our way of saying, look, we know that if you reduce or modify these activities, um, these postures, these habits, that's going to generally that facilitates a, a more optimal healing environment, a more optimal mechanical, physiological environment for this upper neck to heal. And that's what you're coming in for. You know, we, we want to get you better. And that's what we know is, is um, the way to help get, get you better. So we just want to yeah. try to foster the best environment for you so we can help you out the best that we possibly can. And also, um, what I uh, you got to give your upper cervical doctor a chance to fix things too. Um, doctor Jeff and I have both seen sometimes. Oh, so what we do is we take your 3D X-ray and we write down every single misalignment you have in the upper neck and the lower neck. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the misalignments, all of them don't show up right away. Yeah. Um, for me, my C3 didn't show up for probably four months into care, and. Um, I don't know why that is yet. I think the body heals through things in layers, Mm -hmm. but sometimes certain misalignments take a little bit of time to show up. And that can be one of the biggest uh, things that determine the outcome, the success of your healing. So if I just, you know, if I just after one month said, you know what, I'm just going to stop doing this. I probably would have had never had my C3 adjusted and I probably would have not getting the results I've wanted. So you got to give your spine time to heal and you got to give your upper cervical doctor a chance to put everything back in place because we write down all your misalignments, but sometimes they don't show up right away neurologically in your leg check. So Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. the body is constantly adapting and healing under care. So you got to give your upper cervical doctor a chance to get everything situated. Again, I keep going back to give it about three or four months. Yeah. And I would, and I would agree. And I think that's a big difference with the upper cervical approach. Um, and, and at large in the chiropractic profession as well is it's, it's a different type of approach. If you're saying, look, we can help you. It's going to be conservative. It's going to be specific. It's going to be, be impactful, but you need time. And I think that's sometimes the hardest message to convey is it's like the body can heal itself, you know, you know, the, it knows what needs to get healed and it has that capacity, but you, you have to give it, you have to give it time. And it's, and unfortunately when we live in a, a more of a global kind of world of very instant, whether it's, you know, commercially or medically when it's instant feedback and wanting, okay, this, but not wanting to change habits or not wanting to give it time that that's where you can have, um, it can be a little bit of uphill battle and you need time. Your body can do amazing things. And like I said, in a, uh, it can heal in a lot faster time than it probably began getting dysfunctional, but you just gotta, you gotta give it that opportunity. And if you give it the opportunity and, you know, you keep asking questions and being due diligent, like, you know, that that's where I think the expect miracles really, really happens. Yeah. And so if you are a person suffering with vertigo and Meniere's disease and all the symptoms we were talking about before, what should you do? So you can obviously, we do work with neurologists and ENTs. They're great. If you want to go and get your hearing checked and make sure, you know, everything is okay. MRIs, CAT scans, that's a great idea. Um, yeah. I'm not, we're not saying don't go to the neurologists or ENTs. 
that's that's a good place to go even to get diagnosed check your hearing and all that yeah. um and you know you can try the epley maneuver that's good too but i think people wait too long or don't even know that upper cervical chiropractic is, exists if mm -hmm. i knew what i knew now upper cervical chiropractic would be my very first stop and I wouldn't have had to wait five years to land in an office to get help and get my life back. So mm -hmm. if you are struggling with these symptoms, I would first and foremost find an upper cervical chiropractor near you. Mm -hmm. We are obviously biased. Uh, we believe the Blair upper cervical technique is the best. So I would go to BlairChiropractic.com and see if there is a Blair upper cervical chiropractor near you to help resolve these issues. Mm -hmm. If there isn't a Blair chiropractor, you can visit UpperCervicalCare.com, and there's about seven or eight different upper cervical techniques that are still great that could definitely help you out. Um, it's 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 really amazing what we've been able to see in our office, and people get uh, their vestibular issues fixed. Mm -hmm. We have hearing come back, tinnitus go away, vertigo gone. It's it's uh, it truly is expect miracles um, when you're talking about upper cervical chiropractic. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we've talked about this before. Those are just the vestibular issues, let alone probably a lot of other stuff that's been muffled in the background because of the vestibular issues. That's probably going to also get better. You see it when we do our, our reevals on some of our patients that are coming in with the upper, with the vestibular issues. There's other things that they might have going on and they're like, oh, my acid reflux has also gotten better. Mm -hmm. You know, my my hip pain is, is not where it was, you know, stuff like that. And uh, little things that you might not even realize, like I'm lights. I can see, like we've had how many right. days? I was like, the room looks brighter. Yeah. So just little things that might even be in the background because of the intensity of these vestibular issues, it, it gets better. Absolutely. And for those listening, it's not normal to wake up with a blaring headache every day. It's not normal to have blurred vision. Um, and being chronic pain, I think people are so used to, you get used to your, uh, if you get used to your symptoms, um, it just becomes an area where you just start to live with it. You don't have to live with it. If you are suffering with any of these issues, I know you've probably been told it is not fixable or you can't get better and it's just simply not true. So always keep exploring for your own health. You can always get better, mm -hmm. never give up on those issues because, uh, you know, you just never know. So I, yeah. Yeah. And you, you have, I think at the end of the day, you truly have nothing to lose because especially if you're going to a Blair doc or if you're going to an upper cervical doc, they're going to give you a very precise, very detailed assessment. They're going to be able to, they're going to most likely find something. And if, if for any reason, if not, they will certainly tell you, but mm -hmm. they're probably going to find something that they can help chip away at, get the ball rolling and you know what? You, I, I just, I truly think um, you have nothing to lose. I think giving it a try, being patient, like invest in yourself and, and give yourself the opportunity. And I think you're one, you're certainly going to, I think, start to see the the volume, turn that dial down, move, get the needle moving, get these things starting to feel better. And then obviously just given time and healing capacity, that's when these things start to really just kind of go away. And the body has, and the body's had a chance to, to heal itself up. I agree. Um, so if anybody is suffering with these vestibular meniers, these issues, find an upper cervical chiropractor near you. Um, Dr. Jeff and I are going to start uh, doing more videos on certain conditions and how upper cervical chiropractic can help. If mm -hmm. there's any condition for those listening that want us to do a video on, please leave them in the comments below. We'd be happy to do one. If you have any questions about upper cervical chiropractic, we can do an episode on that. Um, just let us know. We are here for you. Um, we are both at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic in West Orange, New Jersey. We specialize in the Blair Upper Cervical Technique. This is the Expect Miracles podcast. You can look at it on iTunes, um, Spotify. We have close to 200 episodes. A lot of upper cervical doctors have been interviewed health issues, other practitioners. It's a great podcast. Check it out. And please, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Dr. Jeff, any closing comments here? No, nah, I think you expect miracles. That's that's what we're all about. I Very think it good. pretty much sums it all up. 
All right, everybody. We will be uh, live again next Thursday. Be sure to tune in. Have a great day, and we will see you soon. Bye, guys.